Traumatized survivors of the Astro World disaster continue to tell their harrowing stories. Today we're going to be revisiting the Travis Scott performance at Astro World. I never covered this because I just started reacting to true crime probably a month or two ago. However, there were several lawsuits filed after his concert because hundreds of fans got injured as well as 10 people confirmed dead. Now, some people know Travis from when he was dating Kylie and had two babies, Stormy and Air. Others know him from his music, music videos, concerts, but he also had a face for fashion and went by the alias Cactus Jack. And I kind of perused the website a little bit. It looked like he sold some vinyls. Other than that I couldn't really find much. Cactus Jack just seems like a brand name. The entertainer also founded an American record label in 2017 calling it Cactus Jack Records. Again doing a little bit of digging into finding out exactly what Cactus Jack was I did come across this reddit post. Joining the Cactus Jack Club means you're now a member of Travis Scott's rap crew gathering lots of attention, hanging out together, making songs or even projects together, promoting each other and being promoted by the brand, touring and performing together, and sharing the group aesthetic. Mainly, you're ranking in attention and opportunities such as Apple Music promo, Beats commercials with LeBron that come from being associated with one of the most popular artists. Allegedly, being in the group gives you instant attention and relevancy. Regardless of your popularity, fans of the group or of Travis Scott will now want to be like you and will actively try to make themselves like you. So what is it, like a popularity contest? The concert was held in Houston at Astro World. From the beginning, there were already so many red flags that something could go terribly wrong at the concert. I don't believe the reason still has been confirmed, but at some point, the crowd surged the stage, causing a stampede and causing at least 10 deaths. And the victims' ages range from nine to 27. TMZ reported that at least 11 other victims went into cardiac arrest, and then more than 300 other fans went to a nearby hospital. I don't believe the hospital staff would have been prepared for the onslaught of people that were about to rush through their doors. I am going to do my best on pronunciation. I mean, no disrespect if I don't get them right. I will do my best. We have Franco Patino, 21, John Hilgert, 14, the second to youngest victim, Brianna Rodriguez, 16, Rudy Pena, 23. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, Danish Bag, Danish Bag. His age is unknown, yet his brother posted something on Facebook calling him a beautiful soul and someone who put everyone before himself. Jacob E. Jurenek is 20, Axel Lacosta is 21, Madison Dabisky, 23, Barty Shahami, oh, I hope I'm not, Barty Shahani, I believe that's right. Uh, 22, and Ezra Blount, the youngest victim, only being the age of nine. Uh, Travis, according to CNN, over 70 medical professionals rushed to people's aid. In normal circumstances where the situation proves to be extremely dangerous, the staff is prohibited from putting themselves into harm's way. So you got to imagine, regardless of that, these professionals put themselves out there. There's videos of them trying to get through the crowd on their emergency vehicles, and you have people dancing on top of the cars. I mean... If everybody good, put a middle finger up in the sky. Okay, where my guy, man? Come on. Hey, all that, all that, all that, all that. Two hands to the sky. Two hands to the sky. Two hands up, y'all. Two hands up. Y'all know what y'all can't do. Chase me. Let's go. Oh. I want to make this motherfucking ground shake, guys. The energy that is coming off it just seemed really 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 evil i just feel like there was a lot of bad energy coming from that concert we're not going to get into religious debate here but personally as a christian it seems very satanic to me uh the visuals the fire the red the, the symbolism and then on top of it you have 10 people passing away 
And then how quiet they were after. We'll get into that as well. As I alluded to earlier, several things went wrong to this concert before it even began. The firefighters the day before weren't even in proper contact with the staff of this event. When the firefighters asked for radio communications, allegedly they were given phone numbers. By 11 a.m., there were already videos surfacing of a massive crowd showing up to this concert. Around 50,000 people showed up for the concert, and nobody really understands what started this stampede. There is a plausible theory that there was someone within the crowd who is actually injecting people with unknown drugs. So that would send people into a panic who ended up passing out. I feel like a domino effect started and then people reacted to the pandemonium. I don't personally go to concerts or shows very often because if I have to sit shoulder to shoulder with people, I get very, very, very claustrophobic. So I can't even imagine how people felt at this concert. I went to a mosh pit once when I was like 15 years old, my first concert ever. And I've never been back. <laughs> Not only was it medical professionals that were trying to reach people who needed help in the crowd, but fans were even trying to get the attention of the cameraman. If you heard anything about Astro World, I'm sure you saw that viral clip of that girl climbing the ladder and approaching the cameraman and asking them to stop. Travis during the concert even says something about someone passing out, which I believe is typically normal for concerts. People get hot and tired and fatigued, so Travis seeing someone pass out is probably not his first nor his last time at one of his shows. However, I find it really hard to imagine that he didn't hear any of the commotion going on. Of course, that venue was massive, but I've seen clips of entertainers like Adele. She was playing in this enormous arena and could literally see one of her fans being bullied by security because he was like standing and if you've never seen the video, you might not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> The point that I'm trying to get at is that there were a massive amount of fans even in that auditorium, and although it wasn't outside and dark like Travis's was, again, it wasn't the exact same situation, she paid attention very closely to her audience. Ariana Grande is another example where she was performing on stage. Again, I couldn't see much of the venue, but it definitely was dark, and all she did was have to hear one of her fans say, <laughs> So that tells me from an entertainer's point of view, you at least can hear something. But I also understand that he has earpieces in. Now I'm not even blaming Travis for this tragedy. I think the people involved, the people who were in charge of safety and inspection and making sure all of that went smoothly, they're the ones held responsible. But what kind of still rubs me the wrong way is that I believe Travis went on to talk about doing at least 10 to 20 shows after Astro World, I don't know about you, but I don't know how I would feel after like literally watching lifeless bodies being crowd surfed out of my show. That just wouldn't sit well with me, um, but it, I'm not everybody. So Travis Scott did put out a statement, so did Kylie Jenner, and so did Drake who attended the concert after they heard about the tragedies following the event. Travis Scott went on to say, I am absolutely devastated by what took place last night. My prayers go out to the families and those impacted by what happened at Astro World Festival. Houston PD has my total support as they continue to look into the tragic loss of life. I am committed to working together with the Houston community to heal and support the families in need. Thank you to Houston PD, Fire Department, and NRG Park for their immediate response and support. Love you all. Kylie Jenner went on to say, Travis and I are broken and devastated. My thoughts and prayers are with those who lost their lives or injured or affected in any way by yesterday's events. And also for Travis, who I know cares dearly for his fans and the Houston community. I want to make it clear we weren't aware of any fatalities until the news came out after the show and in no world would have continued filming or performing. I am sending my deepest condolences to all the families during this difficult time and will be praying for the healing of everyone who has been impacted. 
uh, again, I'm having a hard time believing, you know, to, to some extent, I think the show should have been stopped and I think someone knew the show should have been stopped. The statement coming from Drake reads, I've spent the past few days trying to wrap my mind around this devastating tragedy. I hate resorting to this platform to express an emotion as delicate as grief, but this is where I find myself. My heart is broken for the families and friends of those who lost their lives and for anyone who is suffering. I will continue to pray for all of them and I will be of service in any way I can. May God be with you all. So if Travis isn't responsible, who is responsible? Well, like I mentioned, it should be the people in charge of the safety protocols, the managers. If you followed Britney Spears' story whatsoever over the past couple of years, the name Lou M. Taylor might ring a bell. Believe it or not, she was and maybe, I'm not entirely sure, uh, Travis Scott's manager as well. Oh, Lou. Lou, why do I feel like every time you get involved, something goes terribly wrong? And also, what does Live Nation and Apple have to do after we found out that at least 120 victims have filed a 55-page civil lawsuit? And they're seeking a hefty settlement of $750 million in damages. I found an article talking about the trial because I wanted to know, well, have the victim's families gone to trial yet? So 2024, uh, it reads, a trial had finally been set to start on Monday. This was May 6th. But who jumps in last minute and delays the proceedings but Apple? What does Apple have to do with well, I'll tell you. Proceedings have now been pushed back indefinitely due to an unresolved battle over whether Apple Incorporated, which filmed Scott's Astroworld performance for an exclusive live stream, should be involved in the case. So did Apple live stream Really? Scott teamed up with Apple to live stream shortly before the concert to secure millions of dollars to help him pay for the distinctive mountain-shaped stage. Their contract required him to finish the concert in order to get paid. Oh. I'll go back into this article in a second, but just like a little... So maybe we didn't know and couldn't stop the show because of said contract? Wow, that'd be dirty. The lawsuit alleges the placement of Apple's cameras. I've, I've got to read this very... The lawsuit alleges the placement of Apple's cameras took up space and otherwise would have been claimed by about a thousand patrons at a dangerously overcrowded venue. So Apple's being sued because their cameras were in the way? I don't know. I don't know how you could directly uh, prove that. Okay. Um. Apple disputes the idea that its cameras contributed to overcrowding, which caused the deaths of 10 festival goers from, from compression asphyxia as audience members press toward the stage. The company also argues it cannot face liability in the case because it was operating as a news company on the night of the disaster. I mean, wouldn't they have said, they would have definitely signed a contract. So I feel like the venue would be, end up being liable for any uh, safety issues because you're sort of, you're hiring this third party company to live stream it. Um, Apple does not own the venue, nor are they running the venue. But yeah, that's odd. The placement of the cameras rather than like what they live streamed. Plus they must have profited off the live stream. To help secure millions of dollars to help him pay for the distinctive mountain shaped stage. So live streaming for profit. In a ruling last Thursday, this was on May 2nd, a Texas appeals court refused to let the case move forward until it can rule on the ongoing dispute over Apple's involvement. It gave Apple until May 10th to file paperwork in the case. So I did go further. It's now the end of July. I wanted to know what happened in this trial. Again, hundreds of people have sued Astroworld, over 120 victims at least. After years of discovery and dispositions, the first trial was the case of Madison Dubisky, was the 23-year-old woman. I believe was due to start on the second. Apple was named as a defendant in many of those cases, including the one filed by the Dubiskys. The victims claim Apple directly contributed to the disaster with the placement of its equipment. Quote, Apple's role in the tragedy is straightforward. It reduced the available crowd space when available space was a matter of life and limb. 
or Lim. Apple argued that simply live streaming the event doesn't make the company liable for the disaster. The company said it had been filming the deadly event as a member of the media, meaning that it was insulated from such lawsuits by the First Amendment. Mm, they have a point. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I, I, don't, I don't see Apple being liable in this case. I, I feel like it'd be like a good target to go for and try to sue in, in, in an incident like this, but I don't think it's going to work to their advantage. But we'll see. Quote, allowing plaintiffs to pursue Apple under state tort law for exercising its free speech rights would have had a significant chilling effect. Recognizing such a legal duty in this case would be entirely unprecedented and would impose significant burdens on broadcasters and live streamers that are frequently bystanders at events. If it's a public area, if, it, if you have public access, you have a right to be there under the First Amendment and therefore not making you liable for something that I'm not a lawyer, but you know what I'm saying? In a ruling last month, Judge Kristen Hawkins denied that motion, leaving Apple to face the trial alongside Scott, Live Nations, and other defendants. Really? Okay, Kirsten, or Kristen. I don't know. I don't I don't see them being liable, but okay, again, not a judge. Subsequently, the tech giant filed an immediate appeal with the state, uh, uh, uh Apple it? Apple it? I'm learning new words today. Court seeking to overturn that ruling, a move that under Texas state law imposes an automatic pause on any upcoming trial proceedings. Oh, so they're just delaying it. It's gonna delay it as long as they can until they can get their booties out of that lawsuit. Quote, Apple recognizes that the trial date is imminent <laughs> and that the court and both parties have devoted much time and effort to preparing the case for trial. These free speech and free press issues warrant resolution before Apple's faces trial. Attorneys for the families criticized this move and they argued that Apple was no more shielded by the First Amendment than the Houston television station whose news on van whose news on van negligently crashes into a pedestrian while covering a story. What? But in an order the appeals court refused to unfreeze the case ahead of the planned trial date. Instead, it ordered that Apple respond by May 10th to the plaintiff's request to dismiss the case. Travis Scott's attempts to be removed from the civil litigation were denied. However, Drake, who had appeared as a special guest, uh, was dismissed from the lawsuit. So the news broke out about the tragedy back in 2021 and Scott was interviewed and this is what he had to say. An attorney asked Scott, have you met with any of the crowd safety experts? To which Scott replied, because of all this delay, the trial was set to go again on September 10th. But by the week of May 24th, they were actually able to come to a settlement. An article reads, Tristan Blount, Ezra's father, his son was sitting on his shoulders when they were crushed by the crowd. Tristan lost consciousness and when he came to, Ezra was missing. A frantic search ensued until Ezra was eventually found in a Houston hospital severely injured. The boy, who was from Dallas, died several days later. During the crowd crush, attendees were packed so tightly that many of them could not breathe or move their arms. Those killed died from compression asphyxia, which an expert tells us is like being crushed by a car. So far, no lawsuit has gone before a jury, but one wrongful death lawsuit, again Madison's lawsuit, um, was only days away from going to trial earlier this month before it was delayed and then settled. Lawyers had announced that the other nine wrongful deaths had been settled in connection with the concert. In the terms of all 10 settlements, are confidential, so I'm not going to be able to get more information. About 2,400 injury cases filed after the deadly concert remain pending. More than 4,000 plaintiffs filed hundreds of lawsuits after the Astro World crowd crush. Boy! Again, I'm not blaming Travis directly for this, but it really rubbed me the wrong way that he then went on to perform 10 to 20 other concerts. To me, it just gives you a little glimpse into his uh, ability to be empathetic or even at the very least sympathetic. Personally, I feel rather disgusted um, to even attempt to make something like that happen again. All I can hope is that in his concerts moving forward, that major changes were made to make sure that safety protocols were put in place so something like this would never happen again. Imagine being on the floor passed out and all you hear is Travis saying, I want to make the ground shake. I want to make this motherfucking ground shake, God.
I just feel like this concert was sort of swept under the rug and people are sort of forgetting about it a little bit so that's why I wanted to talk about it today now that these civil lawsuits have been settled do you think that Travis is gonna feel any any remorse whatsoever but I want to hear what you guys have to say about it below and I will see you in my next one